No time for questions. Instead, we'll head straight on to our last presenter, who's uh, Zdenek Prikur from Kodasip. He's the co-founder of CTO. He's going to talk about uh, configurable LDB debuggers for RISC-V. Hi, uh, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Zdenek uh, from Kodasip. I know you're tired and everything, but I hope that you have at least some uh, you know, energy inside your bodies to, to follow the last presentation of two days. So uh, the, the name is, or the topic is about the LLDB and uh, you know what we did with uh, with LLDB and uh, how we tune it to Risk Five targets, but before that, since we are in the commercial offering, let me go over a few slides about who we are, what we do, uh, which products we have, and uh, you know things like that. So, well, who we are, uh, so, uh, you know, we are a provider of RISC-V compliant IP cores, so we have a family of them, and I will describe those uh, cores in a, in a minute. Uh, yeah, founding member of RISC-V Foundation, so we joined in 2015. Company is based or was founded in the Czech Republic, uh, but it was based on uh, more than 10 years of research. So you know, the background is quite uh, quite good. Uh, we are a member of uh, several task groups such as compliance uh, or uh, ta or trace or, and others. We are also contributing to uh, open source projects such as LRVM on, or Open OCD and, and others. Recently, we opened some offices in Silicon Valley, in, in China, and in, in Germany as well. So if you look at the, at the family uh, that we have, uh, so as a tribute to Berkeley guys, the, the family is called Brachilium. And uh, uh, we have, uh, again, several series. So we have uh, BK3, 5, and 7. So we try to keep things simple so we don't have any big table. We have just three, three series. Uh, BK3 is really meant for the MCU kind of thing. It's a free stage, 32-bit uh, implementation. Then we have a, a VK5, which is five stage, can be configured or used either on 32-bit, on 64-bit. There is um, several options on the, on the branch prediction side and so on. And then the biggest beast is uh, BK7, that's a Linux capable core at 64-bit. And uh, you know, all things that you need to have inside of such a core is, is in there. Then all of them are obviously verified and proven. So we have all the you know the things that you need to put in the silicon, all the documentation set, and everything is there. Of course, uh, have uh, the standard AMBA interface. You can choose from uh, several options. And last but not least is that uh, you know uh, every single core can be configured in some way and can be customized. And I will. Just briefly, you know, talk about that. What we actually mean by configuration and customization. So, in the Codasip world, the configuration is that you can select from uh, ISA modules such as IE, MC, whatever, and also from the microarchitecture options that we have, such as caches. So, you can configure caches in many ways. You can configure your branch prediction. You can configure, you know, microarchitecture things that uh, are not ISA related necessarily. So, there's the configuration part. But we don't stop you. We don't stop you there because we allow you to do customization. And by customization, I mean adding your secret sauce, your innovation things, your uh, your differentiation. And we allow you to do it, so you don't have to ask us necessarily. We, obviously, we can do it for you. But uh, you know, the point is to give you tool, uh, to give you a tool by which you can do do really amazing stuff. And because uh, in the first day. We heard a nice presentation from Luca Benini, and it was, you know, not really nice to see that actually the results that they uh, they achieved uh, was because of a customization. 
And some of the, the, the things that they did actually moved to the standard things but before, because they did it in the first place, they achieved really nice results. And this is the reason why we have a, a solution for, for this, uh, this purpose, and it's called Corasive Studio. So what's, what's uh, Corasive Studio? So, well, it's an EDA tool by which you can customize uh, the, the, the BK series. So as an input, there is a description of your uh, you know, differentiation or innovation. The description is done in a C-based language. It's called Codal. Uh, it's C-based language, so it's uh, not, nothing uh, really you know, uh, special to learn. It's very easy to follow. We can see an example there. And uh, you know, that's a single input to uh, Studio. And then the Studio contains several generators. One of them is RTL. So then, you know, from the description, we are able to generate uh, readable RTL or uh, in, in Verilog, System Verilog, or VHDL. It's up to you. We keep IDs. So if you use some IDs in the, uh, the Codal language, then the, you find the same IDs in the RTL. You find links back to the Codal model if uh, you need something if you debug something. So that's this RTL generator. Then we have SDK generator. So we are based on LLVM. So if you add some new instructions, for instance, then the LLVM compiler is aware of these new instructions. And it's able to emit these instructions automatically. So no need to change your C code unless you want to. Uh, obviously, you have all the low-level tools, assembler, linker, uh, different kind of simulators, uh, profilers, all it comes or it's generated by by a studio. But last but not least is the verification. So we have a strong methodology here as well. So the studio is able to generate UVM-based uh, environment, including tests that uh, you know, stress the edit instructions, for instance. So if you add some kind of Mac or bit manipulation instructions, then the studio is able to generate test cases that uh, you know make sure that you know you have really high coverage in the verification in the end of the day. And the, the studio is like an add-on. So you know you don't you, you may you use it if you want and if you need. You can live with the uh, default uh, default BK, uh, default BK core, which is uh, in this slide. So there are several business models that we have. Whether you are happy with uh, the configuration side, so you just select BK3 and IMC with parallel multiplier, with debug, trace, whatever. And you know, it may happen that uh, it's enough for you, and that's, that's OK. But if you need uh, to add something more on top of that, sure, why not? You just you know, license an, a studio as an add-on, and you just add your secret sauce there. It doesn't have to be ISA necessarily. It can be something microarchitecture related as well. So you may add instructions, and then you know, press a button, and you obtain a fresh RTL, fresh SDK. RTL contains implementation of, of the instructions or of the microarchitecture tweaks that you may want to have inside of uh, your RTL. Well, this is really you know, a short summary of our product line. It's just end of the product pitch. And let's uh, you know, go dive into, into more uh, interesting topic, which is LLDB. So <laughs> what's LLDB? LLDB is a, is a debugger. It's, uh, it lives within LLVM project. It reuses a lot of code from LLVM projects, so uh, there's a Clank and other tools, uh, you know, for the C compilation. And uh, LLDB reuses, uh, uh, you know, nicely the code that's already written there. It's, you know, if you look at uh, LLDB, is something similar to, to GDB if you look at it in this from this perspective. The LLDB was designed uh, in a way that it's really easy to extend. There is a system of plugin. I will talk about it later on. That allows you to add new targets quite easily, and not only targets, but you can add new operating systems. You can add new binary files, and so on. So it's a really nicely designed with this <coughs> with this feature that allows you to to you know uh, making uh, debugger either you know better or aware of new targets. Obviously, it's part of the SDK. So uh, if you do some kind of ISA extensions then the, the LLDB is aware of this extension. So if you do the debugging or disassembling during the debugging, you will see a new instructions there. That's, that's uh, you know, quite obvious. Uh, the nice thing about the LLDB is that we made it uh, in a way that it works either with ISS, so you don't have to have a real target necessarily, or it works with um, the RTL simulators from, from Mentor, Cadence, and, and Synopsys, 
or it, uh, you, actually you can do the on two debugging if you want. So all of these cases are supported. You can see some, some pictures on the right side. So either you connect uh, the LDB to ISS or to OpenOCD that connects to RTL simulators or LDB talks to OpenOCD that talks to the real FPGA boards or uh, ASIC. Uh, in, uh, we support LVM 7 and 8. So uh, 8 brings some nice features uh, inside of LDB and uh, I will highlight one of, one of them later on. If you look at the uh, architecture of LLDB, how it's done, then the entry point for any target is the architecture definition and it's stored in the arc spec of H or CPP. If you open that file, you will find a lot of enumerations like from, from ARM cores, uh, for ARM cores, for x86, for MIPS cores and so on. So <coughs> when we uh, were adding uh, RISC-V, we had to add uh, targets for RISC-5 32 and RISC-5 64. We basically create a link between ELF files and uh, ABI. And ABI lives in the plugin. So then the first step is to add you know, some enumerations and definitions in this file. And then you need to add ABI plugin. And in the ABI plugin, what you need to define is a set of registers and uh, the meaning of the registers. So for instance, you need to say that, okay, this register is, uh, is program counter, or this register holds uh, the, the frame pointer, or things like that. So, so that's, uh, that's live inside of uh, the ABI plugin. <clears throat> ABI also uh, contains things like uh, you know, how to do trivial call, call, or how to return value from functions. So then if you step out from the function, then you can see the value that the function returns. So everything is closed inside of ABI plugins. And you may have ABI plugins for RISC-V or uh, MIPS or x86. It's, everything is there in, inside of plugin. Another plugin that I'd like to highlight is a platform. <clears throat> so platform basically is, is like a vehicle on which you run something. So in our case, what we did is that we have added a platform that actually initialize and run ISS. There are platforms for uh, Linux and Windows as well as well as for remote debugging. So that's, that's you know, a platform plugin. Then we have a process plugin and you need to define that as well because if you add a platform, you need to, find, you need to define a way how it, the debugging process communicates with the platform and that lives inside of a process. So we have added a process that's able, talk, that's able to talk to, to uh, our ISS. And last but not least, uh, there is a, a disassemble plugin if you have all the shell configuration, there is no need to touch it, but we had to because we support custom extensions, and for that purpose, we added the features inside of that plugin to help with uh, the custom instructions. There are many other uh, you know, plugins for operating systems, simple files, and so on, but those four are the most important, for, at least for us. And if you need to add just uh, you know, off the shelf, uh, RISC-V target, you need to have this guy and ABI. Now, if you look at the interface of, of uh, LLDB, there are two kinds. One is a command line interface. It's uh, what you are used to from the GDB side, from the GDB world. So you load the application, you, you know, use commands. LLB, LLDB has its own uh, set of commands. Uh, it's reworked. It's new, but there is a layer, or you can define a layer that's uh, compatible with GDB. So then you don't have to learn a new command unless you want to. So that's just part of that. The nice feature in 8 is that, as you can see, there is a code. And if you use LDB from 8, the code is uh, uh, nicely highlighted. So there is a syntax uh, processing, and then you can see the variables in one color, keywords in other color, so it makes life easier to, to debug in the command line. The second uh, interface is MI. It's machine interface, and you need that interface if you would like to talk to IDE, like Eclipse. Well, the current status of LLDB MI in the master, uh, in the Git, is not perfect. So there is a lot of missing features. So we enhance that and add it to, to it. Uh, right now, we are cleaning the code and preparing patches for, for the upstream. So you know, to summarize, our last slide is that, OK, so uh, Codacip is IP provider. We have a family of cores that you can configure and customize. The customization can be done by you. And uh, in, we are LLVM-based, 
So not only compiler, but also debugging infrastructure is based on the LLVM project. That's, that's all, I guess, because we're running out of time, and Dreamer is coming. Thanks, Dana. You can probably ask questions over dinner. <laughs> I think that's the best thing to do. Remember, the dinner is open to everyone. It's not members only, it's everyone. Please do come, uh, eat the great food. Uh, follow Frank, who will be trying to lead you from building to building. Uh, hopefully, he'll manage. If not, it should be fairly straightforward anyway. There should be people posted along the way. It's only five minutes walk, uh, and it's on the top floor of the main building. Thank you all, and thanks, ETH Zurich, for a great event and hosting us today. Bye.